Bicolini becomes prime minister. All right, so we have a spaghetti eating griffin down to ourself. Hello everybody, my name is Jojimbo XD and welcome to the channel and Merry Fool's Day to you. I hope your day was filled with japery, but my days are filled with mods. Yes, today we have something very special that I've been saving for a very special occasion. And I figured today of all days, we'd look at it. It is Equestria at War or the fan fiction version of My Little Pony mod for Hearts of Iron for. I can't believe this day has finally come. So for those who don't know, this is a fan-made mod that has its own original universe and lore based on the My Little Pony universe, but every nation is a kind of reflection of existing nations or cultures. Every time I see this mod, I'm completely baffled by it. I really don't know what to make of it. Basically, it's a World War II pony mod that is incredibly well done and fleshed out. And as you can see, they're on version two 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 this was updated less than a week ago as of recording so this is still a very kept up to date mod so this was a request somebody had asked me over on discord so if there are any other mods or any other games you'd like to see you can always reach me out there or let me know down in the comments below of what you would like to see but yes i think today we'll finally look at what is actually one of the highest rated mods on the steam workshop it's on the first page if you look at top rated mods so so I don't know what's funnier that somebody put so much effort into a mod like this that it's so popular or that it exists even in the first place. So as I said, I don't know what to make of this, but we'll take a deeper dive. And I think today we'll have some mystery and magic and friendship and we'll get into it. So looking at the scenario straight away, we have a few options. They have the new content that they recommend. So I do like to see that. But in this world of ponies, there is more than just horses. There are other creatures like griffins and zebras. And today it was recommended to me that I look at Griffonia or the Holy Roman Bird Empire. Very HRE looking crown and flag. But let's take a look at the world map. So yes, as you can tell straight away, this is a very huge and ambitious map. I know I say ambitious a lot, but this is one of the ones where they had a vision and I think they delivered. So truth be told, I don't know a ton about this mod and its lore or the My Little Ponies universe. I somehow find it hard to believe that they had tanks and airplanes in full blown total war and the a children's TV show, but I guess we've gotten to this point anyways. So we'll take a deeper look at it and <laughs> just see what it has to offer. Oh, I'm already losing my mind. All right, but today we'll look at the Griffonian Empire. We kind of have a HRE situation to start, so let's get into it. I almost said we had Iron Man mode off, but it's Iron Pony mode because of course it is. And we'll leave historical AI focus on because why not? All right. So here we are in Griffonia and immediately we have a lot of lore here. So you can start immersing yourself in the world that is Equestria at War. Long story short, we were once the rulers of pretty much the entire world and now our empire is crumbling. Also, they did implement some new mechanics. We'll look at those here in a second. All right, here we are in our central bit of our empire and we are in a faction with our neighbors. And right away, you can see this mod has polish because even the icons have been customized every little facet of this. Although this one does raise a lot of questions. How do you live in a world where everything is human shaped without opposable thumbs? This just raises more questions than answers. Let's look at the tech tree and see what else they've changed. They really haven't changed it too much from the vanilla tree, but they did tweak a few things here and there especially in the inventory equipment. But the main draw is every race seems to come with its own special set of technologies they can research unique to them. It gives you more replayability options, I guess. You can see all the text that everyone has. All right, but let's get back to what's familiar. Let's take a look at our economy. As you can tell, it's a small starting nation, not a super great economy, only eight military factories. And I got to set some of those to making planes. So I think we're going to have to do some reforms and turn things around a bit first. And we need to start hiring some generals and let's take a look at it. And as you might have noticed, this mod is filled with a ton of custom art. It looks like they really went out of their way to make sure everyone had a portrait. 
but thematically we do appear to be very German looking, except for him. I don't know why we have a dog. Is he sentient? I truly don't know. Oh, he was born in a family of hat makers. Okay, I, I just have no words sometimes. <laughs> this mod leaves me at a loss for words. As you can see, the customization doesn't stop at the portraits. They even have their own events with their own art. I can't even imagine how long it took to get all of this compiled. There are literally hundreds of pieces of art between here and the loading screens and everything else. All right, the whole reason we haven't looked at our focus tree yet is because it isn't unlocked, but something tells me we won't have our Ember very long, so I think that will kick things off. So it looks like he's about to go on a bit of a vacation. That always goes well for monarchs. Oh, and we lost our holy relic that gave us our mandate from heaven to rule, and now we're being made fun of for it. It's not my fault. Birds are sneaky. They can take things from you very easily. All right, we can start upgrading our spy agency. And as you can tell, they've also have some custom art for some of the icons, but some others they've left blank or haven't gotten to it yet. Oh, what's the matter? You don't want to have a cutesy little pony taking suicide pills? At least give us the one of them doing plastic explosives. That could be fun. Well, we made it back home safely, but then our emperor did a bit of a flop in his chair. So looks like things are getting rolling. Ah, there's a touch of the base game, reminding you that the Olympics are a thing. Bikalini becomes prime minister. All right, so we have a spaghetti eating griffin down to our south. Now our emperor is dead for real and our our heir is only a child, so we need a regency. So that has unlocked our focus tree now, and we can go down this path, which is the non-aligned path with the Duchess, but I'm no bird simp, so I'm going to go with bird pope and the supremacy path instead. Also, because that just sounds cooler. Basically, I think we're having to deal with some internal powers, and we are trying to reform the old ways, and bring in the news so we are going to blame our problems on the nobility that's a very french tactic though and while we're not currently at war i think it's time to do some purges so we can get through these negative debuffs so time to purge some griffins we need to get rid of the rotten officer core how very russian of us so i guess one of our officers is revolting and we can let him take over or we can crush the revolt this one seems to be less punishing if i crush the revolt so we're just gonna go with this one and it looks like the traitor general was given the dick cheney treatment on a hunting trip so that little rebellion is no more and we got some stability and political power so good day's work for us but we did lose one of our generals plenty more griffins where that came from and we are getting around to doing some of those army reforms well so far we've only been doing our main political focus tree and now we've put the archon in charge so the head of our religion is now the regent for our young griffin boy over here and i guess he has an axe to grind with the nobility so it's our first day in the regency and we're already sinking our claws <laughs> into the young emperor so bad news the nobles don't seem too pleased with the archon being in charge and i think we're about to fall apart yep there goes half our faction and now our old puppets are bombing us or place named Strawberry Duchy. That doesn't seem very neighborly of you. I guess we can work on some other things other than military reform, like literacy. Not sure how we conquered half the planet without being literate, but let's teach some griffins to read. Put down your griffin-shaped machine gun and pick up a book. There we go. Just finished the all-important naval department for a country that is completely landlocked. And let's take a quick look at our ministers. We already got one for free. We have our Chad General, one of our big Big three leaders right now and we can even hire ourselves i guess as an advisor we'll take our own advice and it looks like our passive spy defense is already paying off we caught our first spy but honestly it looks like he's already ready to get lined up against the wall and shot and there we go our literacy campaign is starting to pay off so that is all found under here under the development tab but it gives you more of an indication of things like poverty levels and societal development so that is also a new feature and we already purged the officers so might as well purge some commies and some other unwanted political enemies griffin padre demands it requiesa in pace so the rest of our puppets have finally decided to ditch us i think it's time to punish the traitors and see if we can maybe 
put ourselves back together again. We'll be one big happy Griffin family soon enough, even if I have to do it by force. So let me get my troops into position first before I formally declare these wars here. Don't mind me, I'm sure our negotiations will come to a peaceful end any minute now. All right, let's deal with our disobedient puppets then. Enough screwing around. Just walk around their troops wherever I don't see them. There we go, tanks are making a big breakthrough now, and we have a division sneaking around the back over here in the east. There we go, that is Yale down. Now I think we can pull all our troops over there and focus down the rest of this front. And there we go, there goes the Caterin Principality. So what you get when you defy me? Now you all have to come to church on Sunday. All right, who do we go after next? I think Angavir here looks pretty undefended and I have a focus to go after them. And you don't appear to have any allies. All right, finishing that focus automatically triggered the war. So let's see what our flock of eagles can do. Here we go, we can just easily walk around most of their forces. And look at this, we even have a pony trying to save its own skin from the glue factory. Well, welcome to Team Griffin, buddy. And there we go, the barony is down. Pretty easy to do when you outnumber them. All right, there are some smaller targets I can go after next, but I am sick of the strawberry duchy sabotaging me every five seconds. So I'm going to deal with them next. And we sighted Comet on the eve of us going to war. Is it a bad omen? I failed to see how a flaming ball in the sky couldn't mean anything more than good news. All right, we have finished the focus and it's actually dragged us into a war with three of our neighbors, our former puppets. So I think we're just going to hold them down with the defensive line I built over here on Feather Age's border end. We'll just see if we can take out the smaller nations first. There we go, nothing like making their divisions chase after your tanks. Oh, never gonna catch me. There we go, pretty easy to confuse the AI like that. That's one puppet down. Shouldn't really say puppet, I'm just fully annexing all of these places. There, almost had some of my units encircled, but I did the old Uno reverse card and encircled them instead. They seem to be putting up a better fight in Strawberry, but Feather Asia seems to be relatively undefended, so I'm just having all my rookie troops that were guarding the border run in. Here we go, got a few more pockets here and there. Just taking a road trip in Feather Asia with my tanks. There we go, found their soft underbelly. Strawberry Duchy followed them soon after into the afterlife. All right, looking better. I like this look better. Just a few more puppets to go now. Now to deal with the Republic of Griffheim. It should be easy. They're much smaller than the three foes I just had to fight. I don't think we need any fancy tactics this time. I think we can just pummel them with everything we have and they will crumble. I guess this is what a Griffin Blitzkrieg looks like. And there we go. Pretty easy. Probably should have taken the chance to stab me in the back when I was fighting my other puppets in the north. I was trying to make some suppression units for some garrison support, and I realized there is no cavalry divisions, which I guess when you think about it, does make sense. How would it be horses riding horses? Come on, that would just be ridiculous. And we invented our first magic weapon, which looks like it's a rifle with a bit of crystal stuck to the end of it. I bet the wizards wish they had thought of that one. And I guess we have a cult of Marite in one of our cities. I don't know what this is, but that image looks like a creepypasta. So I'm going to say just execute them all immediately. Why take any chances? I don't want to be in a creepy pasta that was about the man playing the haunted pony mod. All right, there is one last puppet we need to get back into the fold. That is the Skyfall Republic. This little piece right here. Come back to the nest, little one. All right, we've declared war on Skyfall. They are in a faction, which I didn't realize earlier, but I wonder if they'll even call in their allies before I crush them, but we'll try it anyways. Yep, they did call in their allies. Guess I have to do something about that. There we go, got the last of Skyfall pocketed and I've seemed to stabilize this front. And they stupidly moved off their victory point to keep attacking me while they're encircled. So I will gladly take advantage of that. There we go, didn't even have to kill that last pocket of tanks. Hmm. They seem to be pushing me in the east here. Let's see if we can do some encirclements and correct the motion of this front. There we go, got a nice encirclement down there. Man, they had a lot more troops than I realized. This is becoming quite the slog. Just gonna make little encirclements wherever I can. We've done this before. Oh, there we go. Apparently I only had to capitulate the Griffonian Republic and I don't have to fight in all this no supply hell in the North. Thank goodness. Well, might as well annex it all and steal their Navy. All right, so there we go. There is our huge Griffonian empire. And I basically didn't even touch 
the military or the economic tree and there's a bit more of the political focus tree to see which is basically just go to war with the entire world but i think we'll have to save that for another time so yeah that was the equestria war mod a mod that i still to this day cannot wrap my head around but i will say it was a blast to play and the fact that there's so much polish everywhere on this mod if it's a joke they fully committed to it and i can really appreciate that so i highly recommend this mod it may seem strange on the surface level but there's a lot of fun to be had underneath so i can kind of relate to that so yeah i think this is where we'll leave it off for tonight like i said i had a great blast with this and once again this was a suggestion so if you have any other mods or anything you'd like to see let me know down in the comments below so shout out to the devs and everyone who had suggested this mod to me all right till next time catch you later bronies